Hey there guys, it's Rick Hughes here with Ergen Web, and I've got kind of a new video series I'm gonna be doing. We're gonna be taking products really based on your comments, uh, and we're gonna be looking at them together, just pulling some raw data so that you guys can see the contrasts between the two products. Now, this kind of content is generally gonna be on my Modern Air Gunner channel, but since this is the first episode, I wanted to put it out here so you guys could see it, and then know you need to go subscribe to Modern Air Gunner so you keep getting this kind of content in the future. Now, this video, we're probably gonna come up with some fancy name for this series, but for right now, we'll just call it Head to Head, and I know that's been used. Uh, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here, but I don't know what else to call it. So recently I did a video on the Gamo Swarm Magnum 177. This is the Gen 2, very nice air gun. Really shot well for us in our video. That long form review, you can go take a look at it. It was a few weeks back. In the comments, somebody said, hey, the Hot Sun Speedfire's got more power than that. And this is the kind of stuff that happens all the time. And I don't know if it's like a brand loyalty or just they don't know any better, but the truth is, that these are two very different guns, and in all honesty, this really isn't a fair fight when you're looking at, like if you're looking at just raw power output, the Hot Sun Speedfire is based on a lower power system than is the Gamo Swarm Magnum. This thing is based on Gamo's top tier power system, and the, the Hot Sun Speedfire is kind of based on the middle of the road uh, power system from Hot Sun. Now the 125 and 135, that would be a different story. But what we were looking at is the most powerful, you know, magazine-fed brake barrel. And right now, as far as I know, the top of the heap is the Gamo Swarm Magnum. So, first of all, I wanna say this video was brought to you by Airgun Pro Shop. Uh, if you guys are looking to buy an Airgun solution, something that has everything ready to go, good to go, and you take it out of the box, and you're able to put lead on target, that's what we do here at our Pro Shop. So that's who's bringing this video to you today. So let's take a look at these two guns. So like I said, it's really not a fair fight if all you're looking at is power because this is based on a lower power system than the Gamble Magnum. Just off the top, that's just the truth of it. We're gonna get sort of into the specifics of that. So let me tell you how this video is gonna work. We are gonna take a look at just some core data. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at is ergonomics, uh, how does it feel to cock the gun and just shoot it. Uh, that's subjective. So for me, that might be different than you. So while I'm gonna share that information with you, it's based on my preference and that may not be yours. So that's of a lesser importance. The other data we're gonna look at is just raw data. So we're gonna look at trigger pull, which we're gonna pull the trigger pull gauge out, test it, see what we got. That's just hard numbers. We're gonna look at crony numbers, and I've got four different pellets here. I've got the Hobbies, RWS Hobbies, which is like the baseline light lead pellet. We're gonna see what they do. I've also got the Platinum PBA. We'll see what they do. Um, I've got the 8.4 grain JSBs. That's a great sort of middle of the road. And then I've got the Barracuda Match, which are, let's see, these are 10.65. So we've got a splattering of pellets we're gonna test over the crony. I'm not gonna do full shot strings. We'll take a few shots, see where we're at, and go from there, okay? Now, the other thing we're gonna test is um, accuracy. You know, I plan on doing a full long form review of this gun. For you guys that wanna know about the Speedfire, I've got it in 177, and I've got one in 22. So we will get to those in a long form review. So that'll be coming up down the road. But for now, we're just gonna look at the raw numbers, compare these two together, and see what they bring to the table. From there, you guys can decide, oh, that's what I want, or oh, that's what I want. What you guys decide, I don't care. I'm not into brandism where you gotta buy a certain brand. I want you guys to get the gun that works for you, and that's what this whole video series is about. Now, I'm gonna go get the camera set up, and we're gonna jump into it. We're gonna start off with just the ergonomics, and then we'll go from there. Be right back.
All right, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna take a look at each of them in series. So I'll tell you about this one, then I'll grab the gamo, I'll tell you about the gamo, and as we work through all these various tests, we're gonna do it the same way, one after the other, so you guys can see them compared sort of side by side, but at least relatively close on the same variable. So, uh, the Hotson Speed Fire. It feels pretty decent. I do like the composite stock. I am kind of, you know, interested to see them go to this sort of composite uh, breach area. They used to be all steel, and I really did like that. Um, you know, composite materials are what they are. Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Over time, we'll have to see if that holds up. Um, I would have preferred to see steel continue there, but hey, it is what it is. It, uh, it does have this, and this is what makes it special, and this is why we're doing this video. It has the speed fire system. So you have a magazine that drops in there. Now, the one thing that's nice about the hot sun is it gives you two mags, which is interesting because I couldn't find my second mag today, uh, and then I eventually found it. But that kind of tells you why you probably should put two of them in the box because it's pretty easy to lose them. And if you lose them, you're done shooting. So you got to have the mag on both of these. That's the case. Now, it probably has some sort of uh, shrouded moderator system in here. Uh, I don't know what they're doing that way. Let's see if they got anything on the on the thing. It doesn't really say, but we'll test to see how the, how the noise level is. Um, it's got a variable power scope. It does have a mil dot reticle, but... Um, Half of the scope is plastic. Um, don't know what I think about that. I guess we'll see if it holds up in our shooting. Now the magazines are 12 shot, where the gamo is 10 shot. I'll tell you that the cocking energy on this uh, is much easier. So very little work to cock this gun. Let me go ahead and discharge this. Now it has an automatic safety. So every time you fire it or cock it, you're gonna go ahead and have to um, reset the safety. Some people like that, some people don't. I'll tell you that that is so much easier. Um, it's, it's actually really gentle in the sense of uh, cocking force. So I do like that. It feels pretty good to shoulder and shoot it. Not bad that way. So now I'm gonna set this down. We'll jump over to the Gamo. And this has a different feel. The stock to me feels a little bit nicer. I love um, this pistol grip that they have on these stocks. I love the the higher flies already the higher cheap comb here Now this actually does cause an issue if you're running with open sights um, Because it's really hard to get the right eye position for the running the open sights this uh, on the hot sun The sights are really high and you can pop this up right here And now you've got as you can see how the sights work there um, you wouldn't have any issue with the cheat comb on this running open sights. But we're going to run optics. And this also comes with a variable powered scope, both 3 to 9. This has a duplex reticle, but the scope is all aluminum, which is, I think, kind of nicer and better. We'll see again how it does on target. If you notice, this doesn't have a shrouded barrel. It just has this can on the end. It also uses a... Okay, so that takes a lot more force. It also uses a uh, composite breech. I'm not a fan of that. Um, uh, I really would prefer that they were using um, uh, metal there. Metal on metal is better to me than plastic on metal. When you're talking about a joint that can wear out, let's go ahead and discharge this. Now this has a manual safety. Okay. The shooting cycle of both is pretty decent. Um, now, one of the big advantages this has just operationally is this can utilize their um, inertia magazine. So, and we can go back and watch my video on this on um, both the 17722 and see how it works. But essentially, when you cock the gun, it puts a pellet in, but then it doesn't advance the mag until it feels the recoil. Then it advances to the next pellet, which means that you really can't double feed it as easily. This one, it would be very easy to double feed. You're out in the field, you cock it, then you don't take your shot. You're walking around, oh, I'm gonna take that shot. You cock it again, now you got two pellets in the breech. Very easy to do, so you wanna be careful of that. All right, so again, as you can see, the cocking force is significantly more on this. And that's probably gonna equate 
to that higher power output. One other difference just mechanically, when you look at these guns side by side, and I'll try and get some B-roll of this, this has a more narrow cylinder. This has a wider cylinder. So while the actual action is very, very close to the same length, I mean, it is very close to the same length. Uh, maybe ident it is the same length. Because this is bigger, um, it's got more volume, that's what gives you more power, okay? Just, it's not necessarily about how fast that piston's pushing forward or how much power it's got behind it. I mean, obviously that does matter, but you gotta have enough volume to actually get the power. This has a bigger cylinder. It's gonna give you more power. So that's sort of the mechanicals of these two guns. Um, both of them have pretty good triggers. And I guess we should go ahead and jump to trigger pull next. Um, let me grab that trigger gauge and we're gonna do that. All right, so this is a Lyman trigger pull gauge. Okay, turn it on. Okay, so I'm gonna cock this. Oh man, that is just something else. Um, let's see. You know, that's gonna be just fine. All right. Okay, that's one pound, 11 ounces. So again, well under. Okay, here we go. That's one pound, 6.7 ounces. Well under two pounds. Do it again. Oh. That's one pound, 8.6 ounces. You know that moved a little bit. Let's make sure we're being fair here. I'm gonna hold this tight here. Yeah, one pound, 6.5 ounces. So let's say a pound and a half. Let's just give it a margin of error there. That's pretty good. I'll set this aside. Let's take a look at the hot on now. Okay, now, uh, here's another important point. This has an adjustable trigger. So there are three screws here, and uh, these can be a little confusing on how they work. The back little adjuster here, that is what is your trigger pull weight on this. I'm not touching anything. Granted, this is gonna have more adjustability. I'm testing these out of the box. If you wanna fiddle with the trigger, I know you can get this to be lighter. You can also reduce the second, uh, second stage engagement, which is also very good. So there's a couple things you can do here with this trigger that you can't do with that one. So trigger, just usability, this is probably better. This is also a metal trigger blade. Now, I've, the composite trigger blades are not a big deal. I actually have no problem with them. They don't bother me at all. But if you're one of those guys who like metal, it's a metal trigger. Okay, let's see. Do we have any pellets left? We're, yeah, we do. Okay, well, this is my last one. Okay, so gosh, the cocking force is, I wanna say it's about half. It really is not at all like we are getting out of the gamo. Okay, so reset our trigger gauge. Okay, we are two pounds, 7.4 ounces. So you definitely, if you want less, you're gonna to wanna to go through and reduce that trigger pull. We'll put a few more pellets in here. Again, this has got 12 shots in the magazine here, which is kind of nice. And this one does just the minute it's it's driven the pellet home. Um, if that pellet pusher comes back, then it's going to be able to rotate. So it would be fairly easy to double feed uh, if you're not paying attention. Okay. Here we go. Gosh, that's so much easier. Okay. Let's try it again here. All right. Okay, so <laughs> helps if you take the safety off. All right, here we are. Okay, two pounds, 1.5 ounces. Let's do another one. Ah, it 
daggum safety. All right, here we go. Okay, that was a little bit better. One pound, 14 ounces. Let's do one more. That would get, it's like it's getting better. This is like one pound, 8.9 ounces. So I don't know how it could go and change so much. Let me do it one more time. Okay, this is our last shot, I believe. No, we got one more after this, okay. Okay, one pound, eight ounces. Maybe I had it on a different part of the trigger blade. I'm gonna grab one more just at the bottom of this trigger blade, because this has got a weird sort of pull angle. That may have been throwing off our numbers in the beginning. Let's do it right at the bottom. Okay, one pound, 13 ounces. Okay, so depending on where you have your trigger in the blade, if you're pulling straight back, or if you're pulling up a little bit at an angle, it's gonna determine actually the pull weight. Um, I'm gonna go with this last reading, which is one pound, 13 and a half ounces. That's probably a good middle of the road, but it will matter where you have your trigger or where you have your trigger finger here as to what kind of pull weight you get. But again, you can adjust this trigger, take some of that weight off, and also adjust the position of that second stage, which you cannot do that with the Gamma. Okay, now let's look at the next thing. Uh, and we're gonna do, um, we'll do lead, lead free and heavy on our noise meter. Okay, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I don't have someone here to give me the number, so I'm gonna have to go look and reset in between each one. Uh, so let's just see what we get. Um, I'm running solo today. So let me go ahead and get the DB meter set up and then we'll run our tests and we'll go from there. Okay, so we're gonna start with the lead-free pellets first, then we'll do the hobbies, and then we will do the heavy pellets. We'll take a, a reading. Uh, I've set the camera up over there so you can actually see where I am in the camera which would give you guys an idea of how I have this set up. This is how I set up all of my DB tests. And I hate doing DB tests because they are not very um, scientific because we're at 4,600 feet. We have ambient noise. We have stuff around us. It's really not a true representation, but everybody wants them. So we're going to do them and I'm going to do them in the same way I was doing the trigger pull test. What I'm going to do is fire from the table. I'm going to do three shots, and we're going to go look at the camera, see which is our, you know, loudest. And well, it's going to register the loudest based on the the dB meter, and and then we're going to know what that did. So here we go. This is the lightweight um, platinum PBA. Okay. Now, if you notice. Uh, we did not get a supersonic crack there. The last shot. Okay. So that's three shots. Let's see what our DB meter shows us. All right. So we had a max um, sound level of 98.5 dB. It's actually relatively quiet. That's probably mostly all mechanical noise. Let's do three shots here with the hobbies. Let's see what we get. Okay, three shots. Let's see what we got on the dB meter. Okay, out of those shots, we registered a high of 98 dB. I really don't think we're gonna get a lot of variance because none of these pellets are cracking the sound barrier. I think we're gonna see a real difference when we switch over to the Gamo because uh, that will definitely crack the sound barrier. So you're gonna get a registration of that supersonic crack 
more so than you are the gun noise. Let's see what we got here. These are the heaviest pellets at 10 point something, 10.6. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so those registered a max of 90, 70 B, so they were a little bit quieter. Oh, and we've got something going on here. Check this out. Okay, this is something. Uh, we ratcheted these scope mounts down, but they're sliding off. Um, we may have to put a stop in here um, now you can do weaver mounts, but I'm going with what just came with the gun and they're already starting to loosen up and slide off. So these mounts may not be suitable to deal with the recoil. Uh, we'll see if that continues to give us a problem when we get to the accuracy test. We'll do the same drill here. We'll do three shots and we'll go and check and see what our highest registered value is. And then we'll go from there. Now. These are very light, and these uh, will definitely be breaking the sound barrier. Let's see what we got, though. Okay. Down range. Okay, as you can hear, that's very different from what we were getting before in highlights the bigger compression chamber and the additional power that this gun or velocity this gun can push. Okay, okay. let's see what we got. Okay, that was 101.8 on the DB side. That's pretty hot. Let's see what we're going to do here with the seven grain hobbies. All right, here we go. No, go for the safety that doesn't exist here. All right. Okay, still looking at breaking the sound barrier with those seven grain pellets. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, I don't know how that registered what it did, but it registered 95.8, which is, it's actually really good. I would have expected with that supersonic crack that we would have had more volume or more sound pressure measured, but that's what the meter got and that's what it got. So now we're up to the 10.6. We should not have any of that crack because these will definitely shoot below the speed of sound. Oh. All right, here we go. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, so that came in at 91.9, which was very decent. I mean, that is uh, pretty quiet. That means, mechanically speaking, this gun is very nice and very quiet. If you run heavier pellets, you're actually going to be quieter than the hot sun. That's pretty awesome. Uh, what's nice is because you have all this extra gas in the tank, you can run heavier pellets, you do get more energy, and you can have more knockdown power. So. That's where I would not shoot anything that's going over, this, over the sound barrier for accuracy or hunting. I have not found that to be practical. But the fact that you have that extra gas in the tank here, going with a heavier pellet, means more energy on target, better range, better accuracy at range, generally speaking. That's what more power gives you. Now, we're gonna have to like put the power to the test. We're gonna do the crony test now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot three shots over the crony, three registering shots over the crony, and then we're going to just go one pellet to the next on both guns, 
and we'll see what these guns can really do on the Crony. I've got my Pro Chrono Digital Bluetooth model, the Deluxe. Hopefully the audio will come right through. You're going to hear exactly what these guns are doing. Um, should be very cool to actually get some real hard numbers on what these guns can actually do here. Now, let's go ahead and get this going here. The first pellet we're going to start with is going to be the PBA Platinums. I'm going to put three of these in and see what we get. All right, and I am registering these on the phone. I've left the pellet weight out so that we can, I'll add the, you know, the foot pounds and all that stuff under here once I'm done here. 1,055. All right. Nine hundred ninety-six. Nine hundred sixty-five. Okay, a little bit of a variation there. Let's go ahead and jump over to the hobby pellets. All right. And just so you guys know, what I'm doing is I'm aiming at a fixed point downrange so that I'm going over the crony the same exact way every time. 902. Okay. 905. That's more consistent. Let's see what the third one does. 912. That's certainly better. Let's do the eight fours. Let's see here. 900. Okay, 8.4 grain. JSBs. That's a big drop. 767. 754. Okay. That's a pretty big drop. Let's go to the 10 sixes now. Seven hundred forty-six. Okay. All right. So now let me switch out to the gamo. We'll run the same exact test and see what we get. All right. Let's start with the PBA platinum pellets. All right. No. Oh. Gosh, that's a lot more work. Okay. Whew. I'm so used to now grabbing for that safety. That's funny how quickly you get tra trained to that. You do that, that order like that. Okay. All right, here we go. 1,389. Yeah, that's a little bit faster. 1,235. Not real consistent pellets, these, I gotta tell you. 1,389. All right, so we had 1,389 twice. So I'm wondering, these skirts on these pellets can be funky and they're not real consistent. So 
kind of, I guess, fun to hear the crack with, but don't have a lot of value beyond that. Let's go ahead and move to the hobbies now. So these are a seven grain lead pellet, just a wad cutter. It's sort of the standard, at least has been or used to be the standard for, you know, lead pellet velocities when you're doing testing. I don't know what people are using today. I'm kind of going back to the hobbies because they work so good for that. Okay, here we go. One thousand one hundred fifty one. Okay. One thousand one hundred sixty five. Okay, fairly consistent when you're screaming that fast. Let's move to the eight fours. One thousand forty seven. One thousand twenty seven. Okay. One thousand twenty. That's a workout, man. All right. Last one. These are the ten sixes. Nine hundred forty four. Nine hundred forty eight. Okay, super consistent with those heavy oh. pellets. Okay, let's go ahead and get set up for our accuracy tests. And then we're going to go ahead and do a wrap. But this has been pretty interesting to see how each one of these guns performs uh, across this, you know, these varied tests. Just raw numbers. Raw numbers don't lie, and that's what we're bringing to you. We're going to set up for accuracy. Be right back. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our accuracy test. Now, I've spent a lot of time today off-camera shooting. And really, when we're looking at all these different pellets, um, the reality is uh, the best pellet in both rifles happens to be the Barracuda match. So rather than bore you with a bunch of groups that are all over the place, um, we're going to go ahead and just do the best pellet in both of these guns, at least that we were shooting today, and see how they do. Now on all my tests so far, these Barracuda match really deliver about the same accuracy out of either gun. It really depends on the shooter, i.e. in this case me and the hold and the technique. Now, the gamo requires a far more diligent attention to hold than does the Hatsan. Because of the higher power plant, and the greater recoil, it does require more technique. So this, it's harder to get the consistent accuracy out of the gamo than it is the Hatsan. Because this does take more work, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this first. And what I'm going to do, we got a target up there I've sort of just wrapped up a little bit of testing on. I'm going to shoot the bottom left target. I may take a sighter just to make sure I'm still on target here. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and shoot a five shot group. And then I'm going to grab the hot sun, do the same thing, take a couple sighting shots, and then go ahead and shoot a group. Uh, that'll give us sort of an idea uh, on accuracy with both these guns. We're shooting at 20 yards. Wind is what it is. It's up and down a little bit. So hopefully I can hold it together here and get a few good shot groups for both guns and let's just see what we get here. Okay. The other thing I'm noticing with the um, Gamble magazine is you got to make sure the pellets seat all the way and are grabbed by the little o-ring. If you don't, um, sometimes they 
don't want to cycle properly. So make sure that O-ring is grabbing the waist of the pellet. Oh, okay. Let me go ahead and take a cider. Um, on the hold for this gun, it's really something you're going to have to sort of find for yourself. But I'll tell you that for me, I've got to grip it more snugly than I normally would a brake barrel to get it to really be more consistent. So let me just take a shot here. I'm going to shoot at the upper right bowl just for a cider and see where I'm hitting. Okay, pretty consistent to what I was doing before. Do one more here. Okay, so it's doing about what it was in my other practices. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a five shot group, bottom left bull. And the key that I found on the hold here is pull it in tight and you gotta hold it through your shot. If you don't, if you loosen your grip or hold too soon, that's when things get real screwy. Okay, so there's five shots. That's the typical group with the gamo when you have proper hold technique. If you don't use the proper technique, they're gonna be all over the place. So that's super critical because of the recoil, you gotta work on your technique to, to see those consistent groups. I'm gonna go ahead and double check the cameras. We'll grab the hot sign, we'll do a group with that, and then we'll wrap things up. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the scope. I had some issues with it the adjustment as far as the vertical adjustment ran out of adjustment. So I couldn't adjust the shot high enough to use the center of my crosshairs. I'm having to use the mill dots at the bottom. My last test, I kind of had to split the second and third mill dot around the target to see if I could sort of hit. I'm also having to use uh, it on four power because um, if I zoom in, the mill dots are, I mean, they're just, I don't have enough adjustment. It's out of, just out of place. So um, the other thing we had is during testing, uh, I felt something getting loose and there are three screws that hold this rail on. And one of the screws here in the middle, um, I was tightening things up. It just fell off. It broke. It's sheared. I don't know if that was from the factory over tightening it or what, but um, it seems okay now because I got the other two to tighten up. Um, but it is... Uh, obviously there's a problem if they've mounted this rail and it could loosen up so easily. All right, so I'm going to take a cider and then, or maybe a couple, just to make sure we're on target and then I'll go ahead and shoot a group. I will say that the cocking effort on this is so much lighter than the Gamo and also because it has kind of a lesser power plant, um, the recoil management as far as your hold is not uh, as bad. So let me go ahead and take a shot. I'm just going to use the center cider there, and let's see here. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so I think we're good to we're going to be okay there. So let's shoot the bottom right target here. 
Okay. Oh, come on. That went left. Why did it do that? I'm gonna give that first shot a mulligan. <laughs> you say, maybe I shanked it. I don't know. We'll try it. We'll give it. We'll give it a little grace. Oh no! Just wanting to pull left. Oh. All right, turn my phone off. Let's try again here. Oh, well, that went way high. Okay. Let's try again here. Okay, it's just pulling to the left some. Um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I really wanna be fair to this gun. So I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna give it another group. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be generous here and see if I can redeem myself because it's shooting a little left, but consistently so. And the wind has picked up and it is blowing right to left, so maybe that's it. I've got one shot in that cider target. So I'm gonna go after that one here and see how it does. And let's see if I can do better here. Let's give this thing a shot. Uh, let's give this thing a shot to actually do well. So, all right, I am straddling the bull with the second and third mill. And I'm gonna use the right just there. Okay, we'll do one more just to be fair. But that's more like what I expected. Okay. All right, so let me go grab that target and we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. All right, everybody, what do you say we go ahead and wrap this up? So this video is really an exercise in, uh, you know, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> what do I mean by that? is that I have shot a lot of brake barrel air guns. I cut my teeth on them. That's where I started reviewing brake barrels. And I spent just hundreds and probably thousands of hours shooting them. What I've learned in that time or over that time is that each one needs something a little bit different, but they're also very much the same. And that you really gotta know the gun. You gotta know the hold it likes. Then you get the accuracy results. So. I wish they shot more like PCPs, but the reality is that they don't. They each one have their own personality, and so it takes time to get to know a gun. Now, like I said in the accuracy part, uh, the other pellets were gonna be a waste of time. Uh, the Barracuda match really did well in both guns, and in the accuracy, we sort of see that. Um, now, is there a tiny advantage to the Gamo? Uh, probably. Uh, as far as just raw group size. Um, I didn't have the benefit of mill dots to kind of get more in the center, but grouping wise, the, I'm just looking at the back of the target here, uh, and it's definitely a smaller group. Now, 
I think both of these guns are kind of let down at least a teeny little bit by the scope, more so the Hatsan than the Gamo, because the Gamo is actually a really decent scope. Uh, if you were shooting the same distance with the same pellet all the time, you get this dialed in and just call it a day. Uh, this, we just had more issues. We couldn't actually get it dialed in. So I had to use the mill dots just to get close. So definitely, uh, if you get this gun, you're gonna take the first thing, you take this scope and rings and pitch it and put something decent on there to let you unlock what this gun can really do. Because the reality is it can shoot really well, okay? It can actually put pellets where you need them to go. Now, does it do it? Uh, with the same power as the Gamma Magnum? No, not at all. And we knew that going in. And like I've said many times in this video, this was not a fair fight if we're looking at raw power. It wasn't fair. This isn't the most powerful power plant Hot Sun makes. This is the most powerful power plant Gamma makes. So if you wanted to have a fair power test, then you'd want to have the most powerful versus the most powerful. But in my video, I said that this was the most powerful multi-shot brake barrel 177, and I believe that that is still the case. Now, will that change sometime in the future? Probably. Uh, if if Hotson decides to put uh, their multi-shot system on their 125 or their 135 series, uh, now we'd be looking at a real contest for sure. I mean, absolutely. Um, but right now as it sits, power-wise, Gamo crushed it, guys. It absolutely crushed it. And it crushed it in like noise control too. So if you use a heavy pellet, it's actually really quiet. It's actually quieter than the hot sun. I thought that was awesome. Trigger pull, out of the box, way less than two pounds. Very, very usable. The trigger on the hot sun, you can adjust it, which means that if you like tweaking that kind of stuff, you have a lot more adjustability there. Now, overall, I've got a little concern on the build quality side of the hot sun. Because we had the actual equipment breakage, we had this rail loosen up and actually a, one of the screws holding the scope on is gone. The, this rail, I should say, is gone. So it busted. So I got to figure out, you know, is this going to go back to where I bought it or what we're going to do to get that repaired? I'm not going to review it broken. So that's, you know, we got to get that sorted out. But I'm a little concerned on the build quality here. I have had nothing but success with the Gamma Magnum. It shoots great and it's very, very consistent. And I've found the build quality to be very, very good. So all in all, you guys have a lot of data. I'm not gonna tell you which one's better than the other because that's completely subjective. Uh, if you want more power, that is pretty clear which one has more power. If you want the best accuracy, I think it's pretty much a tie. You spend enough time with this, find the right pellet with a good scope, you're probably going to be great. Same thing with this. Find the right pellet, put a really good scope on it, put a lot of time behind a trigger, you're going to do great. So accuracy, I think, is a wash. The rest of the data, it's objective. You guys can look at the numbers, find out what you like, what you don't like, and make a decision. I'm not going to tell you which one to get because I'm not you. If you guys like this kind of video, this long form nitty gritty details, let me know because I like doing them and I'll do more of them if you guys like them. Now they will be over on Modern Air Gunner, so be sure to go and look that channel up, subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff so that you get notified when I put more videos like this out over there. For now, we're gonna have this here on Airgun Web so you guys can see it, tell me if you like it, let me know what you think, and then we'll go from there. Guys, that's it for now. My name's Rick Utzer. Thanks for watching.